After all that setup, it's finally time for us to start thinking about creating campaigns. And the first thing that you're going to encounter when you try and create a campaign is the campaign settings. And that's what we're going to talk about first. So regarding campaign settings, there's a few things that you need to know and we'll be running uh, through them in the next section. And the first one is campaign settings and objectives, which are uh, definitely the most important uh, part of the equation on, on that side. And we'll be discussing the campaign budgets and how you should change and start them, how to do um, the CBO campaigns or com how to use the campaign budget optimization feature of Facebook, which totally changes how uh, Facebook ads work. So we're going to have a separate video on that. We'll talk about the special ad categories because sometimes you might need uh, to opt in for them. Uh, how to make A-B tests, campaign bid strategies, and we'll discuss some advanced features like cost control, buying types, campaign structure, and even naming conventions because you often end up with a lot of Facebook cam uh, campaigns in one ad account and uh, you need to be naming them properly just for organizational purposes. Right, so the first thing that we're gonna start with is campaign settings and objectives. And in order for us to get there, uh, you need to go to uh, your Facebook business manager and go to ads manager. Now we already created a, a quick campaign, um, but now we're going to start with another one. So first of all, you will see there's three levels of uh, campaign objectives. That would be the awareness, consideration and conversion. And obviously they are um, based on the different um, parts of the customer journey. So now we are going to make a quick run through uh, all of the different uh, campaign objectives so that you understand what each one means and what each one does because they're not really very well explained. And so um, I'll also give you some examples of when you might want to use uh, each of those. So the first one is brand awareness. And it says here, show your ads to people who are most likely to remember them. Like, how do you know? What does that mean? The key to that is that Facebook, use it, when you're using the uh, brand awareness objective, Facebook is going to show your ads to people who are more likely to spend more time on them, to, to um, pay more attention to them. And there's several different uses of that objective. So that's just general brand awareness. If you want people to remember something, it's a good idea. And the way Facebook would achieve that is by uh, getting your ads in front of people who are likely to spend more time on that uh, post or ad. That, uh, an unexpected consequence of that is, and, and a good reason to use it, would be if you want to advertise a video and you want people to watch the whole video, right? Because here Facebook is optimizing for watch time. Then um, watch time also means video watch time. And that's one common use of this uh, objective. Another one would be uh, where you want people to just um, maybe read the post or um, kind of spend some more time looking at it if the image is some kind of a puzzle or, or something interesting and you want them to spend a bit more time on that, that would be the uh, only case where you're using uh, this objective. And it doesn't really generally bring you more brand awareness. It just gets you your ads in front of people who are more likely to spend more time on them um, and that includes video watch time. Now, the second objective is reach, which just shows your ads to the maximum number of people as many times as possible. Now, what that means is that you are uh, likely to reach a larger number of people with that objective. But there's also unexpected consequences of that. So first of all, um, once you have an audience 
and you just quickly run through uh, that audience and you show it to, to a large number of people, you're not optimizing for any specific other objective, right? You're just showing your ads to as many people as possible. What that means is that you might also have uh, your ads seen several times by that audience as well, and your um, overall um, exposure is going to be um, bigger. Now, the, the cases where we actually use these ads is, for example, if you have a very small audience, then um, you have a, a pretty close um, targeting and you want those people to quickly uh, see those ads. Now you should be careful with the budgets of those because they can spend your budget very, very quickly. That's one consequence of just showing it to the maximum number of people. And it doesn't mean just once. You can show it several uh, times. And if you have a very small audience and a large budget, it's likely that those few people are going to see the same ad over and over and over again um, a lot of times unless you have more uh, than, than one ad in your ad set, which is another one, uh, another reason why you might use uh, reach. Now, another consequence of the reach campaign is that you generally get a much lower CPM or cost per thousand impressions than other objectives. Um, that would be the case, for example, if you choose conversions, your CPM might be, let's say that you're advertising in, in America or in the UK or some, some more expensive market, your cost per thousand impressions might be $20. And your um, cost, if you with the reach objectives for uh, the same audience and your CPM might be something like three or four. So it's significantly lower, however, that does not guarantee in any way that you're going to get more of the results that you want. You're just going to add your, uh, to show your ad quicker to more people. And it sometimes, if that's the only thing that matters to you and that's your primary objective, reach can be good. Uh, it's, it's often used for small businesses, local businesses, and, um, and in cases where you just want to show your ad to as many people as possible, if it's something like new and incredible and you're going to get incredibly high engagement anyway, reach might be uh, something that you could consider as your primary objective. And before we go to the next ones, the main thing with objectives is that you should choose your ultimate goal with this specific campaign. So, um, uh, and then that's leading very well into the next objective, which is traffic. So with this objective, you're going to get uh, your Facebook to show your ads to the clickiest people, to the people who are most likely to click on the links of your ads and go through to your website. And you should very carefully think, when is that the ultimate goal? So for example, if you want them to come to your online store and buy something, then you would be using conversions. If you want them to come to your website, maybe just take a look at something like a blog post, then traffic would be the best objective. So we've A-B tested this time and time again, over and over for many different businesses, many different industries and so on. And if you compare the two cases, if you want purchases or, or someone to come to your website and sign up for a lead form or create an account or do something else, like do a specific conversion, then going with conversions would get you close to 50% more results. So that can pretty much double the results of your campaign. You only choose traffic when traffic is the primary objective. So for example, if you're a media site or a blog, and you just want to, people to come to your uh, page and see the page. Uh, and you should be expecting uh, much higher bounce rates than uh, with the conversions objective. Now, next is engagement. And what engagement does um, is once you create a post, it will get you the most post interactions. So um, 
as you can see here it says get more page likes event responses or post reacts comments or shares so a common use for the engagement um objective is let's say for example i have a cool new video and i want to use that for advertising but before i do that i can make a post uh, of, of that video and advertise it with a small budget with the engagement objective just to get some more social proof on it so uh, i make the post i post the video advertise it with the engagement objective and then uh, it gets quickly uh, a lot of likes comments shares and so on and that kind of builds up the social trust of that post and then uh, and obviously you would um, be advertising with the engagement objective to your warm audiences that would be people who like your page people who have visited your website people who know you in general people who have interacted with your business because that would get you more engagement quicker and once you do that then you can uh, advertise the same post with the already built up engagement to the colder audiences and with the social proof there it might get you better results because uh, what's going to end up happening is the cold audiences are going to see a post with a lot of likes, a lot of shares, and they would see, hey, that's something that people are talking about. That's something interesting. People are liking it, commenting it, sharing it, talking about it. And that's uh, where engagement gets really useful. Another cool use of the engagement objective is uh, if you want to uh, get kind of... Um, just to build up your page um, so as you already know from the social media marketing course page engagement matters a lot and even if you have a hundred thousand followers if you post something on your page it's not going to be seen by those hundred thousand people in order for you to get there it needs to build up engagement and that's um, always the objective that you use to uh, boost a post in the beginning because what you want the post to get is more engagement now facebook actually i think have started being a little bit clever about it and they started separating um before that wasn't the case but now they're separating the paid reach and the organic reach and so what they're trying to do is to limit the organic reach so that you pay more um but the paid reach actually has its own effect and it will get you more likes shares and so on and it could uh, potentially get your post to um to the organic audiences as well and help you but not as much as as it would seem it's not the same as organic engagement right engagement that you build through over engagement campaigns like which is what's called uh paid reach and paging paid engagement is not the same as organic so once you stop paying it will not um unfortunately have the same consequences as if you had gotten that engagement organically um and you should just be aware of that now the next one is app installs and app installs are pretty good so if you are installing if in people downloading and ins installing your app is your primary objectives you should definitely go for app installs um, for example and not conversions like sending them to your website and having them download the app from there would yield a lot worse results than if you just go directly for um, app installs and uh, as an optimization objective it will literally show your ad to people who are most likely to download and engage with your app uh, which kind of makes it um, easier and better now why is it better it's important for you to understand this because app installs are a defined standard event within the facebook tracking system and so if you go ahead now on facebook and find one and download it facebook is going to record that you did download that app and they will also know what that app is what it's about what are the kinds of people that like it and and, and um download that app so they're going to have information on you and the app itself as well 
And so once you post your app, they're going to get that information for your app and figure out what types of people are like uh, liking it and kind of downloading it. And also they are going to show um, your ads to people who are likely to download apps kind of in the same category and uh, in the same um, audience. So you do define your audience, but within your audience, Facebook is going to show your ads uh, to people who are more likely to uh, download and install it because they have data on them and they know that these people have done so before. If you choose conversions and, 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 and add something like um, uh, downloads, that would not work as well because it's not the same as the standard app install event, which has a lot more information in it than uh, the conversions. That's why app installs works a lot better for apps. Now, the next one is video views. Now, what it basically says is what it basically does. This is a simple one. It, uh, it pretty much tries to get your video viewed by as many people as possible. So it's similar to the reach objective in a sense, because it will get you the most video views. Now, the question here is what does a video view mean? It means a three second video view, not people viewing your entire video, but a three second video view. And that's what uh, Facebook are going to charge you for. And now you need to understand that there's a difference between a three second video view and a whole video view. So that's why um, and sometimes people can just stop for a second or two and that and uh, stop scrolling through their feed for a second or two and they will immediately be counted as a video view and you will be uh, charged for that and, they, and that will be counted as a video view. Now, that's why many people don't like this objective. And actually, if you want to, people to engage with your video and view the the entire thing brand awareness is a better objective because it's optimizing for watch time and video views is not video views is trying to get you as many video views as possible while brand awareness is getting people is trying to get people who are likely to spend more time on your post or your ad uh, and so if you want people to actually watch your video going with the brand awareness campaign is a better idea but if you if your video is very engaging, that's another uh, thing that that needs to be considered. That generally for the Facebook format, you create videos that are very very engaging in the first three seconds. Like um, a good example for you to see uh, would be a channel. Uh, so let's say uh, if you open up Facebook and um, find a channel that would um, do their videos like that, that would be, I don't wanna create a post, I wanna go and find a channel. Crafty Panda is a, a, a channel that does a lot of videos like this. And you can see, if I open up their um, channel, you will see they have videos that are created in a specific format. And you can see, so as the video starts from the very, very beginning, I can see that uh, this is something that's very engaging. So for example, uh, here's another one. If you have so many potatoes, uh, this is what you should do. And it's created in a specific uh, tricky format that gets you the most um, engagement within the first three seconds. Sometimes even you can see that this part is a part of the video. And so you know immediately that this is about making a night lamp with dried flowers and they're going to show you how to do that. And that can get you in the first three seconds and then you can spend uh, the rest of the time actually watching the videos. So in this case, if your videos are following the this kind of engaging type of format, then you could use video views and it might get you better results than brand awareness. But if your video is like a long video of a person talking, then maybe uh, getting the video views would not be uh, as good because it, it, your video is not as engaging in the very, very beginning. And what Facebook is gonna try and get you is three second video views, um, not 
complete video views. Um, you are gonna get the tracking on, on, on all of the, like on the longer views as well, but in general, uh, it's not optimizing for watch time, but for video views. And if you want watch time, go with brand awareness. Now lead generation is the next one. And it, as it says here, it collects leads for your brand or business. Now, lead generation is a special kind of objective because with that objective, you can create lead generation ads. And those lead gen ads uh, work in, in a different way. We will be showing you campaigns on how to, to do those. But basically, they uh, you create your ad and once if people are interested in it, they click on it and they are prompted by Facebook to um, choose... Uh, to, to provide you with their details. So you can create your lead generation form inside of Facebook. And whenever Facebook has the information that you're asking for, it's going to automatically fill those fields for the customer and ask them if they want to provide it. So for example, if your lead generation form is uh, email, uh, let's say name, email, and phone number, then you can create that form in Facebook. And once someone clicks on your ad, they are going to be prompted with that um, with that form. And since Facebook already has their name, email, and phone number, it will automatically fill those fields in and they just need to agree to provide them to you. Now, then what's going to happen is that is going to come up as a lead in Facebook Business Manager, uh, which you um, I'll show you how that works when we actually create the campaigns, but you have your leads in inside of a business manager and then you can also integrate that and make uh, an integration so those leads go directly to your crm from where your sales team can uh, follow up with those leads now the problem with that is that sometimes you get a little bit of a lower quality lead so in order for you to improve the lead quality uh it's a good idea to sometimes make a more engaging form like um ask some specific questions like um, maybe what type of uh, customer they are uh, or if you're if you're looking to get businesses uh, as your uh, as leads uh, maybe ask them how, you know how many people are they and don't just ask them for the standard information ask them for a little bit more engagement uh, so that you can get quality leads um, and once that um, collects a little bit of data, Facebook will start getting you higher quality leads um, than if you just ask them for a name and a phone number. Um, and, and that's one good way to, to optimize your lead generation campaign. And again, uh, you should use the lead generation campaign when that is your primary objective, getting a bigger number of leads. Now, if you, uh, you could do it two ways, by the way, with the lead generation, you, you could also get your, um, get the people to your website and have a lead conversion. Now, with this same, uh, like we talked with the app installs before, the lead generation conversion event has a lot more information than the standard conversion event. And it is a standard event. And by that, definition uh, Facebook is going to optimize and show your ads to more people who are more likely uh, to become a lead because they have information on those people and they know for which other types of businesses maybe like yours or for which similar uh, businesses these people have done so before so that's why you want to use the standard event in this case if you want to go for leads you go for lead generation. You could also do it as a lead form on your website. Like for example, if you want people to sign up for a lead magnet or, or sign up for your uh, email list, then conversions can be better because they actually come to your website, sign up there, and then go through the double opt-in procedure um, and allow you to send them uh, email uh, marketing messages. If that's your ultimate goal, then maybe going with conversions and doing the lead form on your website would be a better idea. If you just want their contact information, lead generation is better by far. And, and, and then you, you move that information uh, through to your um, CRM and then you are going to follow up in some sense. You could also automatically follow up 
and send them an email once they get into your CRM, but don't start like continuous marketing to them. Uh, you can use that as, as an excuse, uh, so called for bypassing GDPR and so on and say, hey, this person willingly and knowingly provided my, this information to me. So you can do it, but it's not as wanted uh, or as, these people are not going to be as engaged with uh, your your website and branding because they have not actually been to your website. That's the difference between doing lead generation with the lead generation um, objective and doing it with conversions. Now, the next one is messages. And as it says here, uh, show people ads that allow them to engage with you on Messenger, WhatsApp, or Instagram direct. Now, this objective is actually pretty good because more and more people and businesses specifically are looking to start a conversation with their prospects and, and potential customers. This is like more often used by businesses that are selling something that's generally more expensive or it needs more consideration. So um, it could also be used as a remarketing campaign and it's pretty good as a remarketing campaign. So, so let's say, for example, you have a conversions campaign for your online store and you are um, trying to get sales with that. And then people come to your website, but then they leave. And then you could be using the messages objective uh, to show them a remarketing ad and get them to, to see you know, what they think. You could also be using it for advocacy, um, for uh, getting customer feedback. And in, in, the, in the first case that I described, if you are selling something more complicated, more expensive, which needs a lot more consideration, then starting a conversation with a subject, uh, w with a person c can uh, help you answer their questions and get them to um, to learn a little bit more uh, about your business and you can close them uh, through messenger and maybe get them to to complete some more difficult objective which is very very good and it has its uses and it, it will actually prompt people to connect with you on messenger whatsapp or instagram direct and it's uh, it's pretty good if you uh, want to use those conversations. Now, we have also seen some creative uses of the uh, messages objectives, and that's to grow chatbots. So the um, once people start interacting with your chatbot, they become a part of your chatbot audience. And if you have seen the many chat course, as I recommended in the social media marketing course, you would know that chatbots have their own growth tools, which can then, once they build an audience, they can be used to uh, to a certain extent to do marketing for you. Another good reason to, to use the, the messages objective with chatbots is that if the chatbot is very well done and actually converts people and has meaningful conversations with them, uh, that could um, be a good reason to use the messages objective as well. Now, all that said, 70 maybe 80% of the time we end up using the conversions campaign. And it's not just us, it's what most people on Facebook, uh, most of the time are using the conversions objectives. And as we know, once we built our customer journey, we are going to know that we have different steps and different um, things that, um, that, different mini conversions that need to happen on our website. And a lot of people do a, a, a mistake of doing multiple conversions campaign for each step. That's really not how the uh, Facebook uh, conversion objective works. You should um, go for your ultimate goal. If that ultimate goal is too hard then uh, to achieve, then you should probably change something on the website or in the proposal or in the business rather than changing the objective to a lower step one. Right, just to give you an example, for Masters Academy. When we uh, started Masters Academy in the very beginning, the first, the most 
the lowest early bird price was a hundred dollars and when we use the conversion objectives uh, for um, purchases at that stage we had a pretty decent conversion now we did the same with the traffic and just tried to get people to a website and this was a lot worse so the con conversions objectives worked better but as we started to add more content to the academy and the early bird promotion started to uh, increase the price w once we started to increase the price we saw a dr dramatic drop in conversion at some point so after we increased the price from 150 to 200 that campaign literally stopped working so and if we go for a purchase campaign anymore it would not be as effective because now this is a more difficult thing to to um to achieve and then the the fix is not to go to a previous step of the customer journey the fix is to just kind of break the customer journey in a different way so that you get a mini conversion that is an actual ultimate goal and is meaningful um, so we'll be talking about those um a lot so no need to worry about them for now but make sure when you're using conversions to select the ultimate goal and of course for you to be using the conversions uh, objective in general you need to have the Facebook pixel installed already and being active and the more data the Facebook pixel has on the standard events if possible the more conversions you're gonna get and again remember that the standard events are better than the custom events most of the time because the custom events are just your own custom events and so you need to have a ton of data for Facebook to figure out who to show your ads to but if you just use the purchase campaign and you are a an online store selling toys Facebook is going to know that John or Dorothy have done that before and they're more likely to show them your ads so because they know they're more likely to convert than other people because they are using the same standard purchase event which carries with it a lot of information some of it we have access to as marketers and a lot of it we don't have access to so the internal data that Facebook has on people is a lot more than what we can use for targeting because of many reasons and so this is why uh, you would use the uh, conversions objective now moving on next is catalog sales and um, just a few videos ago um, or it was the previous video actually uh, we talked about setting up your catalog this is basically used when you have an e-commerce store and you can import your products from your online store to Facebook then that could be used for dynamic remarketing uh, if if a person sees the the red shoes on your website and you want to show them the same ad for the red shoes when they go to Facebook, that would be um, the way to go. And it's catalog sales. Catalog sales are also a must use if you have an an online store for um, uh, remarketing. We often see uh, something like uh, ten. 50 70 times return on ad spend with uh, remarketing catalog sales campaigns they work like a charm for e-commerce stores and they're a definite must try uh, for uh, most online stores unless again you are selling something that's uh, very very expensive and then maybe you should think about some more clever ways how to do that but still catalog sales might, might be one of your most successful campaigns on that front and uh, obviously they need you to set up your uh, store and catalog and um, they also by the way work with the standard events so uh, they are focused on the purchase objective and th they do complete the same purchase objective so um, if you have a conversions campaign th that's focused on purchases and you have a catalog sa sales campaign that's focused on purchases again which it is obviously um, the data from both will count as a purchase events to your business which means that Facebook can use that information to uh, better optimize your ads uh, later on and last but not least is the store traffic and the store traffic uh, is used for physical locations 
So if you have a brand with many physical locations, uh, it's generally used to show people the ad with the closest location to them. So that would be, for example, if you're something like Best Buy or, uh, or um, I don't know, McDonald's, um, you would use an ad that would get, uh, that would show these people the closest physical store. And you obviously need to um, uh, set that up in, in Business Manager as well, in your uh, locations. And that's what the store traffic is. That's not getting traffic to your online store. That would be the traffic objective. And, and if you have an online store, that would be the, yeah, the, using the, the web traffic objective. And this is the store foot traffic, literal people walking into a physical location with location-based ads. Right. So remember uh, that all of the different campaign objectives have their use in specific situations. You want to choose the one that best fits your ultimate goal, not the first step in the customer journey, not the, the micro conversions, but your ultimate goal uh, as, as an advertiser. And remember, you can have different campaigns with different goals. Uh, if your ultimate business goal is to make more sales, then you would obviously have a conversions a campaign focused on purchases. But that doesn't mean that you you can't have um, a post engagement campaigns and branding awareness campaigns and so on. So you can use um, different campaigns with different objectives, but you should always try and choose the one that most closely represents your ultimate goal with this specific campaign, right? That's it on campaign objectives. Now you know more than most people. Um, so uh, I think that's enough for now. We'll be making a lot of examples with um, the different campaign objectives. So don't worry about that. And it's time for us to move on.